There are numerous groups out there that have come together to oppose the globalist assault on life on Earth. Additionally, there are many more groups putting forth different ideas for a better future. A smaller set of groups are actually doing both. Insisting that we must halt the worst effects while also fostering a fresh blueprint for human and ecological liberation. I personally align with this latter approach. It seems clear that we must confront the immediate threats to our core life principles, while also acknowledging the evident flaws in the everyday routines that define the standard in most post-industrial societies today. Given this situation, it becomes necessary to dig deeper into the causes behind the decline of human values and to explore the essential components of a new societal framework. This framework should emerge from the shadows and guide us away from repeating the harmful patterns that are eroding the fabric of humanity. Not long ago, I stumbled upon this term, truth movement, and found out it's a big group of folks all working towards a common goal. Taking down those globalists. It kind of reminded me of the truthers, the ones who are all about revealing the lies fed to the masses. So, I started wondering, what would this truth movement do if it actually pulled off its grand plan? How could they make sure it doesn't fall apart once they're in charge of creating a future free from all the bad influences that usually wreck good movements and ideas? And when I say bad influences, I'm talking about things like jealousy, big egos, not valuing trust enough, power struggles, political ambitions, and, here's my two cents, the group mints it that insists on everyone agreeing, which ends up watering down personal goals and settling for the lowest common denominator, just to keep things peaceful. In a world where leaders aren't usually known for their wisdom, there's a real gap when it comes to making tough decisions that need more than just a surface-level look at what's ahead, especially in those moments when things get tricky or controversial. When our truth movement faces the challenge of shaping the blueprint for the new society, it aims to bring into reality a variety of different beliefs are likely to be suggested. For instance, ideas like ending racial discrimination, communal land ownership, dismantling the banking industry for wealth redistribution, getting rid of traditional government in favor of people-driven rule, providing free green energy to all, and making organic food and farming the main way we produce sustenance, could all come up. To really bring this situation to life in the here and now, I'm going to lay out my imagined scenario for how things might unfold. As these ideas pour in, a committee steps up to figure out how to practically transform these ideals into actual political changes. These changes should reflect the broad banner of the truth movement, whose passionate rhetoric has finally gathered enough support to challenge the long-standing dominance of the globalist control system. This committee consists of the key advocates for the most pivotal ideals that are seen as the foundation of the promised new society. However, the formidable task of uniting this pool of individual potential into a cohesive group of practical pioneers brings to light some neglected but critical aspects. As internal tensions start to surface, cracks emerge in what once seemed like a unified front. Disagreements eventually reach a boiling point, and in a revealing and intense exchange, it becomes clear that the profound meaning of the term truth has never been delved into or even discussed. It's never been seen as primarily a spiritual value, an inner dedication to advancing higher principles, rather than just external shifts in how society operates. To prevent the situation from descending into chaos, a respected analyst is brought in to ask some fundamental questions of the committee leaders. How much do your personal lives align with the actions you're calling on others to take in order to address the crisis and values you're seeing? How honest are you with yourselves and others, if you don't see leading by example as important, yet you still expect others to embrace the changes you're advocating? How committed are you to raising your own levels of awareness? To gaining a deeper understanding of your own ambitions and shortcomings? Are you genuinely on a path of truth in your own lives? Are you following practices that humble the ego and cultivate your connection with the deeper spiritual values that truly embody truth? How resolute are you about avoiding hypocrisy, about not becoming just like the politicians you're quick to criticize? As leaders of the truth movement, can you honestly say you're dedicated to maintaining the highest standards of accountability, integrity, and trust in your interactions with others? What specific qualities are needed to lead your supporters with wisdom, honesty, and effectiveness? 
Confronted by this probing examination, the room fell strangely silent. Being asked to delve into an inner commitment to truth, rather than just at surface level appearance, has forced us to take a hard look at the hierarchy of values. It's demanded that we prioritize a new level of awareness at the very forefront of our agenda for constructing the new society. I'm sharing this story to underscore the challenge that lies ahead for all of us as activists and champions for a better world. If the neoliberal control system collapses or is eventually defeated, we'll find ourselves in a global situation where most people are grappling with unfamiliar feelings of insecurity and a sense of being adrift. A life in servitude to taskmasters offers a kind of safety net that shields us from engaging with or being accountable to the broader world or our own internal journey for liberation. Suddenly, or quite abruptly, being thrust into a position where the expectation is for those who have been the loudest in exposing what's wrong to now step up and establish what's right presents a monumental challenge. At the heart of this challenge is a burning question we should be addressing right now, instead of waiting until urgency forces our hand. The question revolves around a deeply fundamental principle. Should the decision-making process crucial to creating the new desired blueprint be based on wise leadership or group consensus? Is it about having a committee of the wise and the virtuous or sticking with democratic representative governance and a sort of decision-making based on quasi-consensus? To be more direct, a benevolent wise form of leadership or an elected approach that settles for the lowest common denominator, lacking in wisdom or vision, and easily exploited by those hungry for power. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. In the constitutions of the British Isles and many other nations, there's this thing called natural law, or common law, that dates way back. It basically says, there's just one unbreakable rule. The law of God. Yep, we're talking about the law set by the Almighty, a kind of decree grounded in universal truth and fairness, built on the supreme wisdom of our Creator. In a world full of unfairness, a total lack of truth, and a shortage of wisdom, common or natural law, shines as a beacon of hope in a really dark tunnel. The idea of having an earthly law that mirrors the universal law, can only be made real by a group of wise and righteous folks. You could even say that God's laws come from the supreme benevolent leader. At the basic level, these laws show up in the laws of nature, and the drive for a bigger and more diverse range of plants, animals, and insects. For us humans, they represent the age-old pursuit of truth, love, and setting the soul of man free. Even if folks don't realize it consciously, deep down, this is what everyone is yearning for, and now is the time to shout it out. We've gone past the point of no return for democracy or anything like it, so, why not call what will really open our minds and hearts a veritocracy? Veritocracy comes from veritas, Latin for truth. The way of truth. Facing off against a cult-like regime rooted in darkness and division requires an unwavering commitment to the opposite. Truth as the unfiltered expression of our soul's calling. This is the one power that'll break down the forces of darkness and take down the globalist control system once and for all. It is the one force that can unite all of humanity and provide the dynamic foundation for true leadership and true trusteeship in this world. So, let's make the commitment now. Let us be properly prepared to lead the world beyond ruination and into rebirth. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.